The design of modern day tanks have come a long way from how they looked during the Great War, with the Renault FT-17, a French light tank, being the stepping stone for all future tank designs, where a rotating turret is a must have. All these future tanks will be developed to improve on the many features they have, like a better engine, better armour or weaponry. Many of these becoming the ones that so-called history enthusiasts know off by heart thanks to their thousands of hours playing World of Tanks. But outside of that zone, you got those tanks. Ones that have been much more forgotten about, the weirder looking or the poorly designed tanks. But there is one tank that hasn't been as forgotten as much as all these other bad designed ones out there. One that was built out of sheer determination to defend their homelands from possible invasion. One that is still debated on online forums as to whether this is the best tank ever, or simply the worst tank ever. Ladies and gents, tank and history enthusiasts, I would like to present the Bob Semple tank. A tank developed in World War II that would suit better in the First World War. Big Bob here is certainly one of the tanks of all time. The Bob Semple tank was developed by the nation that regularly gets forgetting about in maps of the world, New Zealand, designed by, you guessed it, Bob Semple, who was a New Zealander politician who came from, you guessed it again, New South Wales, Australia. During the Second World War, the big dogs of Oceania, Australia and New Zealand were in a bit of a bad spot with their tanks and armoured vehicles industry. Despite having some form of heavy industries in their respective countries, they never took their industries off the ground. Instead, relying on Britain to be the one who would develop and distribute the tanks towards its colonies and dominions, including these two, effectively having almost zero homemade armoured vehicles. The problems of relying on one person to supply you with something you can do yourself begun to show for the oceanic duo. With the fall of France in the summer of 1940, Britain had lost a big chunk of its tanks and now has bigger matters to attend to, and on the list of priorities Britain had, giving New Zealand and Australia their tanks was somewhere low on that list. This leads on to the next problem with the Axis power on the other side of the world, Japan. The way Japan has been going about on the other side of the world made both Australia and New Zealand become much more wary and cautious about themselves and Japan, fearing that Japan could make these two their next target for an invasion. While the possible chance of an invasion of the two from Japan wasn't certain, this pretty much left the Aussies and Kiwis in a state of limbo, only then deciding that maybe we should start to build our own tanks, in a scenario where Japan tried to invade them. Australia went off and built their own tank, and for New Zealand, this is where Bob Semple comes in. He had devised the idea for a tank to be used in a need of a possible defence scenario, which he got inspiration from a tractor in the US that got converted into a makeshift tank, a tractor tank. He proposed the tank to be assembled and designed as the following. One D8 Caterpillar crawler tractor for the tracks instead of wheels. Metal plating consisting of manganese steel and corrugated iron sheets for the armour or lack of. Five Bren light machine guns, two at the front, one on each side, and the back. A turret, another Bren in the turret. Add some paint to give it that pristine camouflage look. Sacrifice the blood of a thousand Kiwis for 100% New Zealander craftsmanship, and voila, you got the Bob Semple tank in all its glory. Wow, that's a pretty neat concept for a tank. I can't wait to see the final result. What do you mean? This is the final result. <laughs> Good one, Bob. You, you're joking, right? That's right, this was the final result, as was intended by Bob. And what makes this better is that there was no planning beforehand. The closest thing to any form of a reference or blueprint was the photograph of that US tractor tank. As glamorous as this corrugated beauty might seem, it has its downsides. Several downsides. But before we hear them, here's the upsides to the tank. Let's see, it could provide protection from standard gunfire, and the armour could be assembled and transformed tractors into tanks relatively quickly. That's good. Right, so what are the downsides then? Too tall, too heavy, too slow. No hatch, unstable, one gunner would need to lay on a mattress on top of the engine to shoot. Even when you found something to shoot, the result would be something like one of those cartoon scenes where the bullets shoot around the target instead of shooting the target. But worst of all, they had no cannon. No matter how hard they could try to fit a cannon on that tank, they just couldn't. 
so they had to compromise and instead put another Bren inside the position where the cannon would have gone. But despite the countless problems and absurdity of the tank itself, the tanks got approved through gritted teeth and was put into the production line with a grand final production total of... 3. In 1941, when two thirds of the tank had been made, they got shown into a small parade in Christchurch. Then they both went off into separate parades, one going to Wellington and the other to Auckland to show the New Zealand's population what they'd retaliate with in case of an invasion. In the public's response to bestowing their eyes on these beauties, some ooed, a few ahed, and most ha ha at the tanks. So much for an attempt to boost public spirit. But Semple didn't just back down after getting hit with mockery from everyone around him. Instead, he hit back at the haters and stood tall and proud with his creation, telling them, I don't see anyone else coming up with better ideas. Regardless of the whole circle jerk of Semple Tank Bad coming from the people who never tried to make a tank themselves, the New Zealand Army had been given the two tanks and were deemed suitable for fighting on the beach, albeit the turrets had been removed altogether from the tanks, and being told that the three total tanks being produced were plenty and no more were needed. However you put this, fortunately or unfortunately, the tanks never saw any combat, the Japanese only ever got as far south as the Solomon Islands, and by then, British Valentine tanks were now being sent over to New Zealand, so now the need for Big Bob was no longer necessary. For the tanks, they got stripped down from their military roles as tanks and got put back into the public, although one of the three did get put into service, but by then it wasn't even a tank, it might as well have just been a bulldozer. Even though the Bob Semple tank no longer exists, the spirit of the tank lives on through niche history topics and worst tank rankings. But despite the problems the tank faced and the mockery Bob faced, it was the best damn attempts they had given the very real threat that New Zealand was facing. It's a shame they could only muster this from what little equipment and resources they had, a tank that was flawed from the beginning. But hey, at least it suffered no combat losses, so I guess the Bob Semple tank really is the best at one thing. Ah oh well, but anyway, that's all for this one, hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.